frame rater. Reman to me is everything 2D platformers were working themselves up to. Innovative level design and a sense of speed. So why did Rayman, despite still being a success, not take off as one of the true classics? To me that reason would be because of its difficulty. Nobody will disagree the point that Rayman was a brutally difficult game at times. Unforgiving is an understatement. Challenge is rewarding, but with such a thing often comes difficulty selection. Everyone wins when easy, normal, and hard difficulties exist. Might be wondering what I'm getting at here. It is in fact Rayman Redemption, a fan remaster of the original Rayman developed by Rai Mani, and as led up to, it has difficulties. Should you give this remaster a try after playing the original, you'll come to realize just how accurate everything looks and especially feels to the source material. This is as close to an official remaster as you're likely going to get. Even then, this remaster goes so far above and beyond that this sense of love and attention only really could come from a diehard fan. This video is going to serve as two different things. Firstly, a review of the game itself, and secondly, a review of the developer's work on remastering the game. Rayman starts with an introductory cutscene telling you what's going on. You wanna know what's going on? Basically, everything is nice and shiny. There's a sense of world peace and whatnot, apparently sustained by something called the Great Protoon. Then a villain known as Mr. Dark comes and steals it. Somehow this Protoon thing acts like a planet or something because little folk known as Electoons are said to quote-unquote lose their stability and scatter across the world once Mr. Dark takes off with the thing. Without the Protoon at its resting spot, a bunch of strange things begin to happen around the world. Freaks and hostile characters start popping up, capturing the scattered Electoons and caging them up. Now it's up to you, some dude named Rayman, to break free the innocent Electoons and return the Great Protoon to its spot to bring the natural balance back to their world. The real focus when you narrow it down is Rayman's gotta go defeat Mr. Dark who's hiding at the very tip top of their world, a place called Candy Chateau. Rayman's adventure starts in the Dream Forest where he resides. Making his way through the forest he'll come across world specific enemies such as living stones, piranhas, and some abomination known as the Flower Tentacle which serves as a minor boss. There's at least one minor boss in each world followed by a major boss at the very end. That's a very simplified way of summing up the game's progression. The appeal itself relies on a number of factors. Sound, art, and level design. Rayman really is a wonder for the senses as it succeeds on all these fronts. The soundtrack and sound effects are all extremely well done. There's no compression to be heard across its vast library of jazzy compositions and quirky waves. The art style is like an, albeit modernized, 30s cartoon, a solid decade after Cuphead's inspiration, give or take. Rayman keeps it varied as well with the occasional deviation from its familiar formula. Now and then, Rayman may find himself a packet of seeds to build platforms with, or be granted a Firefly friend to help him see through the dark. Maybe there's a flood coming in and Rayman has to quickly escape before it overwhelms him. Not only is it consistently engaging to look at, but helps its already engaging level design. The world feels very conceptual, in this case meaning platforms, pits, and interactive obstacles that are scattered pretty much all over the place. This allows the designers to create both innovative puzzles and sneaky traps. There are fist powers that increase range, damage, and speed at which you throw your punches. There are life powers that can temporarily increase the number of hits you can muster. There's even the occasional fairy that upon walking up to will shrink Rayman so that he can fit in small places. There are some other single-use powers like the aforementioned seed packet, as well as a potion that gives you infinite flight for your helicopter hair, a paint fist that lets you create temporary platforms of paint on floating white sheets, and such a thing being very creative, may I admit. What Rayman's design represents is pure, unfiltered creativity, which is something Rayman's creator Michel Ansel had specifically designed him for. He is a character with limitless capabilities, and most of those being at the will of Rayman's non-existent limbs. Yes, Rayman's own hand will very frequently detach from the rest of his body, as well as his own torso if you wait around for long enough, where Rayman gets bored and begins to toy with it like a basketball. The absurdity of Rayman's world allows there to be basically no limitations on what you could feasibly encounter. Everything goes, and while that might make it sound like a cluttered mess, here it has been elegantly crafted to be integral to each of the game's worlds. Yeah, there are a lot of living creatures here. Butterflies floating about, dancing flowers, hopping stones. I can't think of anything in Rayman that would feel out of place in Banjo-Kazooie. Similarly, I can relate the voice samples to Rare's game, although this, including practically all the speaking roles in the game, are brand new to this remastered release. Let's however continue to hold off those comments for later. Rayman has a variety of special moves at his disposal such as his helicopter hair, a quick sprint, and the unparalleled ability to stick one's tongue out at bypassers. There are some additional abilities that'll be saved for later once you've approached the Toon Totems. There are three of these in the game, which seal within them sentient rings, springs, and poles as trapped by Mr. Dark in order to make Rayman's journey more troublesome. 
Once they've been unleashed, they will grant new methods of transportation through the stages, in many cases even those you've previously visited in order to provide some backpedaling for extra goodies and secrets. The game has a way of notifying you when a secret is nearby. You'll often see little sparkling stars on the screen which, if touched, will spawn something new for Rayman to access. These may also assist in finding magician challenges or presents, of which there are one in each stage. Magician challenges you can complete by going back to the World Hub and selecting his home location. Presents will unlock purchasables in the shop, where you can spend the in-game currency of Tings in order to provide special bonuses. Some of the purchasables will help Rayman in a practical sense, like extra health points, but for me, my favorites were the Rayman 3 skins. Oh, speaking of health points, might I mention what Rayman Redemption does to relieve you of the game's highly hazardous terrains? You'll start with only three health points, but this can be improved by visiting Batilla the Fairy. Introducing the incentive to be breaking open cages throughout the game. Firstly, if you can break open 10 cages, you'll get plus one health point added to your life bar. Secondly, 50 cages will add another, then 120 cages and... No thanks! 15 or so minutes into the game, you'll come across a minor boss whose name is Bizit. He has some varying attack phases that are easily understood, which manages to be the case for all forthcoming bosses. These are all relatively fair, even if in some cases I don't think you would understand what to do on first try. Most boss fights retain their 4x3 aspect ratio regarding the playing field, despite the addition of widescreen. The bosses were built with the challenge of such narrow space in mind, so it makes sense, and I'm glad the developer preserved these moments. Once Bazit is tackled, Rayman realizes he isn't much of a foe, and then makes a friend of him. Now Bazit will help Rayman cross some dangerous rivers and other terrain he couldn't otherwise. These are fully scripted stages that are, in every other case than his first encounter, completely optional as they appear as individual challenges on the world map. There's one for each world. Like the rest, these contain checkpoints within, although I think in many cases I may have gotten a bit too close to that photographer's face. There's a segment with Mr. Dark's dastardly creation, Dark Rayman, just before the final boss. Dark Rayman follows your every move, basically emulating each button you press with a delay of around one and a half seconds. At this time, you'll run through Mr. Dark's castle as Dark Rayman gives chase. This is actually a very well-designed mini-stage, at least until you get to the two ascending platforms that took me about a half hour of retrying to complete. Had there been a checkpoint just before this moment, then maybe it would be serviceable? But as it is, it is simply frustrating to have to redo the same section over and over just to get to the same spot where you keep dying. You have to proceed with a very specific jumping pattern to prevent Dark Rayman from catching up to you, which will be a one-hit kill. Let's take a bit of time out to give Redemption an exclusive look regarding what it's done to change up things from the original. A lot of what I've said in the review up to this point is new. Most of the minor bosses are newly implemented or entirely unique creations specific to redemption. There's even a recurring foe, Dark Toon, who's a henchman to Mr. Dark, carrying out his deeds as he resides safely in the castle with the Great Pro Toon. You fight him several times throughout the game, each with a slight variation on how it's handled. Original levels have expansion, in many cases making them longer, but these don't overstay their welcome, usually. There are a few moments where redemption feels like it sort of drags on, but never did it make me want to close the game. On occasion, I did feel a bit annoyed though, particularly in the game's new world, Playtopia. While it did do some new things like add keys to unlock doors, these levels tended to feel all over the place in their pacing. I don't want to draw too much attention to that claim though, because I think a part of this is played by the music, which is good. It's just a bit much at times. I think the most important thing to mention about Redemption is how it handles difficulty, and I did make a mention of this earlier because originally Rayman is a very difficult game. The new difficulty modes bring what was sorely needed to the original, although I feel as if now the game might be a bit too easy, save for the final boss. The casual method gives you infinite lives, and I think this is a good option. Classic gives you an actual life counter, whereas you'll need to collect 1-ups to increase the amount of deaths you can take before a game over. So where does it become so easy? Well, that would be in how generous Rayman Redemption is. 1-up statues are all over the place. If it weren't for that final boss, I think I would have preferred to go through it the classic way, but even then, I doubt I would have lost anywhere near all my lives. I'm now wondering if an even harder difficulty is warranted for those who want an experience that is more akin to the original. One thing I can say though in its defense is you could choose to never visit Batilla to get those extra life points. You could keep it at three for the entire game if you wanted, which I suppose helps those looking for a challenge. But all the same, lives and health boost points are all over the place. I think a mode with far less of these would be nice for veteran players. Of all the new content brought to Rayman Redemption, I'd have to say one of my favorites would be the new characters. They are designed to be highly reminiscent of the source material, which shows a level of dedication that I must say is marvelous. The original game felt a bit lacking in its diversity of characters, and while the game is fine without them, they bring an expanded sense of life to the world and of course further develop the gameplay aspect too. Some of their attacks may feel a bit simple in a world that otherwise has some fairly innovative enemy mechanics, but at least to me this isn't much of an issue. 
Now, my absolute favorite addition to Redemption is the fist graphic. This was a mechanic I never really understood in the original game because you kind of just collect a fist, then your punch would do more damage range, I think. Thankfully, the indication on your HUD now makes it clear as day just under your life bar. Rayman's fist also changes color now depending on what you've got, so it's a lot more like Rayman 2 in that sense. Ah yes, Rayman 2. The game that started as a true sequel to Rayman 1 but became its own thing because of 3D graphics, I guess. Not to take away from Rayman 2's beauty, of course. Raimani definitely realized that because a lot of sound effects from Rayman 2 have been added here to some new and existing content. It's a nice callback to what is technically the future, according to this game. Let's see, what else do I have here? Ah yes. So much unlike the original, you get all your abilities from the start with the exception of the also newly added Toon Totems. I really like this new format, especially knowing the running and helicopter hair don't actually break anything in the game earlier on. Still, I feel like perhaps an option to disable these things early into the game might be nice. There already are a number of options in the game's, uh, options. More than I expected, really. I'm surprised, though, that there isn't a way to return to the original super loud sound effect of Rayman's helicopter hair. It's been replaced with Rayman 2's sound. Probably a better idea overall, but I kinda miss how stupidly loud that thing was. Seriously, his hair sounded like a blender. I think what also would be nice is a way to change or even completely disable the skid sound you hear when Rayman comes to a halt. I always found that really annoying. Definitely more so than the loud helicopter hair. The remaining notes I have for this are pretty scattered, so I'll just list them as I've written them here. Remember that animation Rayman would have upon hitting what was essentially a bottomless pit, but instead of a pit it was a bunch of musical note spikes? Unfortunately, that animation seems entirely missing from Redemption, which is disappointing. I hope to see that come back. There are countless other references to Rayman material, like the 3 2 one action prompt in the Magician Challenges, which is a clear reference to the Atari Jaguar's Rayman level start. There are also references to Rayman Designer, Rayman Brain Games. We'd be here all day if I had to point out all the little things, so I'll just leave it at that. 